you're gonna yeah. make sure this I'll is... call baloney if she starts trying to tell some fiblets. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're getting the, 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 the true answers here. Yeah. If Josh would quit his job, could you support your family on your income alone? We could find a demon behind every bush yeah, if we wanted exactly. to. And so do you ever do things just for content purposes? For example, trips, baking, activities, crafts, remodels. I love this question because I have this question sometimes too. Love, love, love to hang out in person, but we're all like moms of 500 kids. And like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are, we're YouTubers, so we don't have time right. to like do all the traveling and you stuff. Just have I a meetup and vlog it. Love to do a meetup sometimes. <laughs> So I know this episode is supposed to be about you being the influencer, but I'm not sure we might have to switch because I feel like I've had an influencer moment today. Oh, you're the influencer yes, now. Tell yes, us, I tell am. us. I want to hear all the juicy details. So I was going to go to Eric's shop to bring him his laptop and there's a coffee shop right there. And I thought, oh, I will order a sandwich before I go to school. So I go on the website and I'm like, homemaker sandwich, the homemaker. What is this sandwich? I must have it. There was no description. So I was like, I'm just going to get it. I like almost anything. So I just, <laughs> I just ordered the sandwich. And I did have an inkling because I know the owner of the cafe a little bit. And she had mentioned, oh, maybe I should add that to the cafe. But I kind of forgot about it until I saw this. And I was like, I wonder. But no. So I ordered it. And then I get there. And on the bulletin board, their specials is the homemaker. And it listed out all the ingredients of my sandwich. What I like to call my sandwich. The one I have been talking about on Instagram. And everyone's been loving. I just felt like I arrived. I took a picture of it and I'm like, my work here is done. I am now the sandwich influencer. <laughs> what have, more could I want? <laughs> you officially peaked. I peaked. Yeah, this is all downhill from here. So tell us what the sandwich is. Oh, yeah. It's turkey, cheddar, bacon, apple slices, apple butter, mayo, and romaine lettuce, preferably on sourdough bread, but any bread would work. And if you follow her on Instagram, you would know that. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to try this sandwich, you can go to Cacalico Creek. I mean, not Cacalico Creek. Cacalico Coffee Roasters. Cacalico and... Coffee Crafters. She's still working on her influencing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. It's Cacalico <laughs> Coffee Crafters. And order the homemaker and tell them I sent you. Ah, I love it. That's great. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I was <laughs> so excited. Like, true celebrities have a sandwich named after them. I right? mean, it feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, they should or they wish they did. Oh, man. Speaking of which, I think I, I know we opened up last episode talking about a reel. I saw another reel that was just very, I think she was just trying to get people mad at her. I don't know, like to boost the algorithm. But she was talking about, you know, me. I have a zero, two, four, and six year old. Yeah. Right? She was saying, after you have four kids, it's all the same. You can just keep adding kids. You just add another matter. big kid. And she said, I yes, saw that you one. saw it. Okay. Yeah, I saw that one. She said that it's not like you're adding a baby. You're just adding another big kid on, you know. The baby just stays the, baby, the same. The baby slides up to the toddler. The toddler slides up to the preschooler. The preschooler slides up to the school age kid. You know, so you're not, don't think about it as having this baby that takes all this work. You're just adding another older kid. <laughs> And so I was telling Josh about this. I'm like, what sounds wrong about this concept? I saw that and like I was so intrigued, but I was like, I, I, I only have, I have a six and an eight year old. So I was like, I, I have no idea if this is true or My not. My first gut reaction was, oh, that's a nice way of looking at it. That's yeah. way more appealing to have, you know, eight kids or something. But I also thought to myself, baloney. <laughs> yes. And then I'm like, wait, what? So after there, so if you have a zero, two, four, and a six year old, after that, by the time you're eight, you're just supposed to parent yourself. Right. Like weigh in, those of you that have older children, aren't the parenting issues and the the problems and stuff, big kid, like, aren't they even more stressful and more work than the younger? I mean, I know little babies take so much hands-on physical, like, contact and all that. But, like, I can't imagine, like, I don't think just anybody should just be popping out kids left and right and then have a 14, 16, 18, 20-year-old and just think, oh, it's easy. They'll parent themselves. Yeah. Like, I think I know what she was trying to say. Or, like, it's kind of, maybe she was just being funny. Like, maybe she's just talking about the physical duties. Because, yeah, they become productive and not as much, like, you're physically taking care of them. So. Yeah, I saw there was, like, a scale of, like, the net effort that a child is. Like, a baby would be, like, negative five. And then, like, like a 16-year-old would be a plus five. You know, and, like, an eight-year-old's, like, a zero. They're neutral. They're just as much work as they are help yeah. and like that kind yeah. of thing i don't know clearly we don't have children just for our own selfish gain right. and stuff like that anyway but that reel was just like wait what 
huh? It made you think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. She, I probably watched it twice, and that's what she was hoping for. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, I think the other reason it caught my eye was because I do right now at this moment until next week, I have a zero, two, four, and six year old. That's crazy. It's crazy. I know, nuts. But you know, four kids isn't that many. But when they're that age, it feels like it is a, a lot. Plethora. Yeah, for sure. So our homemaker helper today, I found one. Do you want me to yeah. go over it? So basically, our homemaker helper segment is we want to turn this into like the Mennonite version of Dear Abby. Yes. I mean, Please. there doesn't need to be any Mennonite thing to it, really, except that we provide the Mennonite part of it. Yes, exactly. We're the Mennonites in this situation. <laughs> but yeah, like, send us detailed DMs. Like, we want to know all the deets on your specific situation, and we'll just kind of, like, weigh in as very uninformed, uneducated yeah. opinions. <laughs> Basically, like, asking another friend or for another... Yeah, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. I don't know. I love to read those Dear Abby columns, the paper back yes, in the day. Yes, I used to read them all the time. Oh, man. Anyway, so I had somebody saying in a YouTube comment... That, by the way, if you want to submit a question, just go to Honey, I'm Homemaker on Instagram and drop us a DM. But she was saying how her friends are, she's going to a hen party, which means she's from the UK. Yeah. But like a bachelorette party. And she was like, she's not into all that stuff like they do. And I don't even know what's all involved. But she was wondering more like wholesome ideas for bachelorette parties. And I don't know if we're going to give wholesome ideas here or just like snowed in, sheltered ideas. <laughs> I don't know. But... All the bachelor parties I went to were pretty PG. I mean, sure, we would give each other lingerie and stuff. Yes. But other than that, like my bachelor party, we went to the beach and had a girl's beach weekend. It was rainy and cold and it was like an ugly weekend in May. It should have been nice, but it wasn't. We went to Cape May. Same. Um, and really? Yeah. Okay. I remember like almost nothing of it. And not because I was wasted. It's because I, I don't know why I don't remember it. I just remember there was, like, a bunch of teenage, like, college kids in the house beside us, and we were so sure that they were, like, trying to knock on our door and stuff. We kept hearing things. I don't know. And then the last day, I locked the keys in the Airbnb, and nobody could be mad at me because I was the bride-to-be, but, boy, we were all mad at me. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I would have been mad at you, too. But, yeah. Yeah. So, that's one idea. What have you done? Basically, a lot of beach weekends, but, like, zero drinking, zero strip clubs. Zero clubbing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, (laughs) we did give each other lingerie, but we didn't model it for each other. Maybe some people do that. We didn't do that. Um, Just, like... A normal girls weekend it wasn't anything yeah. wild or crazy but we had a lot of fun you know and, and then all the all the um engaged or dating girls try to get like deets out of the married girls about like because yeah. we're all you know we're saving ourselves for marriage here we're a little scared we're but we kind of want to know some stuff but like we don't want to get too personal well lucky for her she had a big sister like yep. that's really handy <laughs> i remember trying to tell you stuff and you would literally like plug like, your ears <laughs> i was like i'll find out on my own thank yeah. you um my sister i i was very honored to be in her bridal party when she was 20 and i was 30 so just last year i was in her bridal party and for her bachelorette we went and rented a limo and went out for supper in it and just like drove around went into the city took pictures did like a photo sh- like a photo shoot's a fun thing to do we did a photo shoot at the beach for my bachelorette party um but yeah just like anything to that the bride to be will make her feel special mm-hmm. um it does not have to be x-rated or anything like that i personally don't understand any of that stuff i've never no i think the fun of it is that the bride-to-be isn't planning anything you typically pay for all her things so it's just a weekend focused on her no matter what you do it's gonna be fun yeah and take her personality into account and her yeah. interests and her likes maybe she literally loves horseback riding or something you oh know? we did a camp out the one time we camped in whitney's woods i think that was for joelle's that was okay. fun yeah I, it's the people that make it fun not yeah. necessarily what you're doing so yeah anyway drop more ideas in the comments below if you have any suggestions for her again she just wanted like more wholesome bachelorette party activities <laughs> Honey, I'm a Homemaker has a very strict policy of absolutely zero singing whatsoever on our podcast. Vocally talented, we are not. We are not. (laughs) But we do both enjoy music. I myself play actually several instruments and I'm so glad that to me it almost feels like I know how to speak another language because I can play these other instruments and I'm so grateful that I learned them when I was young, when I had the time. And now there is a new way to learn an instrument if you are maybe pressed for time or money, or just want to have a convenient way of having lessons right in your home. Music lessons don't need to be expensive, boring, or stressful. Voberg Music Academy offers online lessons that siblings can share in the comfort of your own home. 
Instead of dragging kids to your lessons and paying hundreds of dollars a month for one student, use our code HOMEMAKER20 to get 20% off every month your children are learning either piano, fiddle, guitar, mandolin, or ukulele at VoteBergMusicAcademy.com. For less than $30 a month, get weekly lessons and practice printables, 24-7 access to your instructor, live student onboarding calls, and video vaults that provide dozens of extra lessons for students who want to progress faster. Josh has been using Vitberg Music Academy to learn guitar, and he's really stuck with it. They make the lessons fun, engaging, and interesting. And my daughter, Ivani, is in first grade. She's also started learning to play piano using Vitberg Music Academy. With Vitberg Music Academy, you will never have to nag your children to practice as they work toward earning badges on their success path and performing for community student showcases. Again, use our code HOMEMAKER20 to get 20% off every month that you're enrolled and give your children a lifelong love of music. Again, that's at VitbergMusicAcademy.com. We'll link that all down below for you. I wish we would have had Voberg Music Academy when I was a kid because then maybe I wouldn't have spent four years with piano lessons and still not know how to play a single song. <laughs> that is really unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, I did learn and I could play it, but it just was not my thing. I had to work so hard and I just never like learned the skill. I learned to play the songs, but I didn't learn to play piano, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I bet this would have been easier for me. So a while ago, we were talking about uh, podcast topics what we want to talk about is like what if i interviewed you and ask all the juicy questions about influencing and youtuber like i know people want to know i want to know so i immediately started squirming a little bit and then i was like no jaina is the gal for the job because she knows me and she also like you're gonna yeah. make sure this i'll is... call baloney if she starts trying to tell some fiblets <laughs> So you know you're getting the, the 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 true answers here. Yeah. Because yeah, it is a very weird industry and there's a lot of things I think misconceptions or things people don't understand. It's a little more common now than yeah. it used to be. But yeah, if you're not in it, it can feel really weird and it still feels weird sometimes some things. Well, I remember very clearly when I found out that you had a YouTube channel, I was like, "What do you like what is it? Like what is she trying to do here?" And it was all very intriguing to me like how you could make money doing this and like what exactly you were doing. So, um I thought it would be really fun to talk about this. So we'll just get right into it. The first question is, tell me why you started YouTube. Like what gave you the idea? And I know you've talked about this in some of your videos, so you can keep it short if you want. But like, what is your why with YouTube? Oh no, this is our podcast. So I can go like, I can tell the true nitty gritty. It's, I think I've talked about it before, but on other people's podcasts and stuff. Oh, so, so there's so a different answer this real... time. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But um, the true answer is I did not, I started YouTube in June and I didn't even know that YouTube existed till the February before that. So like a couple months, I found a UK influencer talking about her day in the life or something. And I was just hooked from day one. So I started just consuming this stuff. And at that same time, do you remember, like, was it called Breaking Amish? Oh, or yeah, yeah. Like there was a couple different like Amish TLC type reality mm -hmm. TV shows that were out and about. And like, oh my word, I watched like half an episode one time and it was just like so ludicrous and so bizarre, like so wrong. Like right. it was very fabricated anyway and of course there's all kinds of like Amish romance novels selling on all the shelves in Lancaster County and stuff and I, I read like two chapters of one book and they were so like th two chapters in she was sitting in a tree she shook her head defiantly all her hairpins fell out and her hair came tumbling down and she was talking to her boyfriend in the yard on a Wednesday afternoon like <laughs> so much like unplausible things mm -hmm. anyway so it kind of infuriated me I was like well I could show my day in the life and people could see that Mennonites are not that weird or that different. Mm -hmm. Like we do a lot of the same things, even if, yeah, like I could break down some of that stuff. But um, I was also at that time looking to start maybe an Etsy shop or something. I literally got up in the middle of the night one time. I was like Googling how to start making, like doing a t-shirt business. Cause I was like, I love graphic design mm -hmm. and that could be fun. And I quickly realized that that would quickly turn from a hobby into like a dreaded chore. Mm -hmm. So I, canceled that at one point I thought about making concrete planters or something and I realized the the shipping costs would be crazy and there'd be like no profit yeah so I wasn't I was wanting to make money and I was also interested in YouTube I just never put the two concepts together really that maybe YouTube could make me money mm -hmm. I didn't really think about that I was just like this is like my witness my um like I can share my Your testimony outlet. kind of my outlet for like a wholesome you know, like truth in the world yeah. and I can like reach people through my YouTube channel and I think maybe I thought, you know, maybe I'll make a little bit of money. But I never really thought about life-changing money or anything like that. Right. Like, who knows? So that wasn't really the idea at all. Um, and so I 
started my YouTube channel and literally by the third video I had already gained a lot of traction and so I didn't have to I had to work like it took a while to build up but I had success a lot earlier than some people do just because um, one a friend shouted me out and her name is Lynette Yoder go watch her channel if you do not also um, which we were not friends at the time she just like saw me and you know Mennonites on YouTube is a mm-hmm. rare thing right and also god thing for sure that june no when was it? i think it was about eight months later youtube featured me little me as a creator on the rise nice. and boom like a video blew up and i think i got twenty thousand subscribers right there and then from then on i had an established channel right. and then it grew from there and yeah i like that so do you think your vision has changed a whole lot from then or are you pretty much you have the same motives for posting on youtube i would say that um when I started, I didn't really know what I wanted to put out, but I knew that if I'm going to spend all this time editing, I want it to be something that I would want to watch. And so that has never changed. I've always posted things that I wanted my, mm-hmm. to make myself or as my time has gotten more limited with kids and stuff, I've had to like do less fabricated like I'm going to go out and buy all these craft things and show how to make this craft and stuff like that. I've had to do more like real life, just like this is what's naturally mm-hmm. happening in my day, that kind of thing. So that's kind of shifted. But what was the question? <laughs> like your vision has stayed the same. But yes, my vision has stayed the same. And if it ever changes at all, Josh reminds me, Megan, why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah, good. So good. yeah. That's the answer I was hoping you would say. So tell us briefly how you make money on YouTube and Instagram. Oh, it's just like a lot of different... Whenever there's eyeballs, there's a potential to make money. So there's sponsorships. There's... um, You can get free product for shouting something out. You can work with... I get YouTube AdSense if I put an ad in a video. So I try to do an ad every like seven minutes. I don't know what the correct protocol is, but I'm like, more than that seems like too much. And less than that seems like, well, I could do it a little bit more. So I'm like, if I'm giving you free content, you can skip a five second ad every seven Mm -hmm. minutes. I don't know. Let me know if that's annoying, but um, it is a nice way to make some money. Um, And like every video that you watch from any YouTuber, somebody's editing that and editing is so time intensive. I mean, unless you don't edit much, just pop things together, but um, it's an art and it takes a lot of time. So yeah, I don't, um, there's also, oh, you can put your own links. Uh, like if you have an, anybody can do that. If you have an Amazon storefront, yeah, you can share your links with anybody. And if they use it, then you get like a teeny tiny percentage, which it's like a raindrop, but raindrops can fill a bucket over yeah. time. So yeah. if you're going to be I, linking stuff anyway, you might as well get a cutback from it. Yeah. You have a small account and you made money through doing the same thing. Yeah. Which I invest right back into Amazon. So <laughs> It's great. Let's make the world go round. So obviously we know it's really rude to ask how much money you make, although that does not stop some people. But how about you just tell us, like, if Josh would quit his job, could you support your family on your income alone? I guess it would depend on the kind of lifestyle we would want to live. I don't know. Um, I will say that I, over the years, it has been life changing. We, the money that I make with YouTube we um, look at it as like an investment. We put our kids in a private Christian school, which is not cheap. So I am able to pay for that. A lot of my friends have to have side businesses to be able to pay for like a school school tuition for their kids. They'll have like dogs or something. They'll raise puppies or their family pet or that type of thing. Or um, yeah, so it's basically like my egg money um, type of thing. But it has grown to be more than that over time. And we were able to do some like investment property and that kind of thing. So no, we're not using it to scale our lifestyle because YouTube can go away any minute. I don't own the YouTube platform. And also I'm a mom of four children. Like I'm so grateful to be here four years later, five Mm -hmm. years later, but it really could go away anytime. And I would hate to feel the pain of that. One, I'd feel sad because it's like my life, my hobby. I love it. But I also don't want to feel the financial pain of it. So we look at our lifestyle. We, we live off of my husband's income. But yeah, I guess potentially, depending how it, what our lifestyle wanted to be. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever accept a brand partnership or ad deal and then later regret it and wish that you would have never taken the deal? That is a good question that I've gotten before. And I will say there have been a few brands that I've regretted working with just because they were such a pain in the butt to work with, like responding back and forth. Or there was a um, brand that I worked with, I won't get too specific, but... They had a really awesome product. I still love and use their product daily. But 
the language barrier was crazy. They, it was just a real pain to work with. They didn't respond in time. And I'm like a stickler with, I want my videos out at this time. And I try to get things turned in early. So we, anyway, so there's never been a product that I really worked with. I think there's been a few products that I worked with and then people are like, do you know this company stands for this or for that? And I'm like, I'm a Mennonite we could find a demon behind every bush yeah, if we wanted exactly. to. And so I don't look into all that stuff. But there's been some brands that I'm like, oh, if I'd known I was going to get kind of that much backlash because that brand stands for something I don't, maybe I wouldn't. I, I mean, I have lots of offers. I could have just turned that one down and picked a different right, one. Right. But no, I've never recommended a product. And then it was like, oh, because I always use it first before I before right. I you share it. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if we want to put this in here or not. The but one we almost did? No, I was thinking I did an Instagram reel oh. about formula. Oh, oh, yeah. And I've learned I learned so much things about it because okay, one for myself, I breastfeed my kids, but I liked it. My mom babysat my firstborn for me pretty regularly, and so she liked to have formula on hand just in case. Plus, I had like freezer milk and stuff mm-hmm. too. So I've used formula as a supplementation for all my kids, and you know, I have I would say several friends that were not able to breastfeed at all, so they were doing formula. And I did not realize that formula is like such a deem de- like demonized thing yeah I mean I know it's like not the best like you should try to do it naturally like I don't know my mom's generation they they brought the breastfeeding thing back again but through that and like I had so many I think I think my reel got put on like a forum or something where people were just like go get go get her yeah you know like that and they were just ripping into me which that's fine like I have to answer for what I put out there you know through that boy People were so ugly. I just kept, I was in tears because I kept thinking of my friends that what if they would read it and they have no choice. Like right. they can't breastfeed their kid. They have to use formula of some kind. What are they going to do? Goat's yeah. milk mixed with like a concoction? Like, uh, Isn't like it what? crazy that feeding your child is so controversial? Yes, I had no idea. So I would like I still like I, I formed my beliefs around formula versus breastfeeding much more from doing that. I learned a lot of things from it. But I still would take it back because I just, I can't handle that kind of It wasn't of worth the stress. It was not worth the hate, worth the hatred and the stress. And I was just like bullied into changing my mind kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Do I even want to put that in there? I have no idea. I'm still not like this like pushing formula lady at all, but. Well, that's not really what you were intending to do anyway. No, I just, I wish I hadn't started that conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you should have asked me because I could have told you it would go like that. <laughs> and the minute I saw you post that, I was like, here we go. Yeah. I, what, what other taboo topics are there out there that you just don't touch? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, formula versus breastfeeding is just, anyway. Um, how do you balance your children's privacy and your public life? How do you know what to share or what not to share? How do you know, like, what they're going to look back on someday and be like, Mom, why did you ever tell the world that? Yeah, that's a tough conversation. I mean, firstly, I think every mom has some gut topics. Like, they know in their gut they're not going to – like, I just choose not to talk about potty training. Like, no. I I have – one, I don't have any words of wisdom. And two, it's too personal, I think. And, yeah, whatever. Um, I I try to make sure that my kids are not the main personality of anything. Like – they're just generic kids, you know, like this is a girl and that's a boy and so-and-so likes to do arts and crafts maybe or like, but they, you don't know they're in and out and their daily mm-hmm. things. I know some people have guidelines like they're never going to show their kids rooms and I thought that's kind of a good idea. Like, you know, a child should have boundaries and stuff too. So I don't know what I think of that. I haven't really showed my kids rooms except when I like redo them and they're brand new. Um, I don't know if any mom really feels like she totally knows and when you know you're always kind of moving that boundary and as your kids get older I feel like I'm definitely pulling them out more and more Mm -hmm. because their personalities are starting to show more they're not just like a generic cute squishy baby ball of yeah I don't know yeah and I know like on my Instagram it's very small compared to yours but like Jack especially just wants to be on like he would if I ever have a suggestion for him he is all about it but he also has no idea like what it what it even is really i mean yeah. he he loves talking to the camera and he loves that he'll ask like how many likes did it get how many likes did it get i'm just like boy <laughs> he's like, like well, i want to be influencer yeah he would yeah. love to, he pretends to be a youtuber i haven't dealt with that with that too much once in a while ivani will be like can i help you with the grocery haul or something like that and i'll be like well i'll film you like in fast forward putting some stuff away i'm not gonna yeah. have you talk to the camera or yeah. like whatever you navigate it as you go and i always am bringing stuff up to josh i'm a lot more concerned about stuff i think than he is but like Every time, like, it breaks down when you talk, talk about Insta- Instagram. Like, if I would start posting my family Christmas picture with hearts over their faces, like, that's, 
<laughs> the Mennonite culture is not like that at all. But we also no. might be too naive too. Yeah, you know? I, I don't know. It's it's definitely something that it's a conversation that does need to keep being brought up all the time though, and be thinking about it. And mm-hmm. if you are choosing to have any digital footprint at all, it's something you should be reconsidering over For sure. and over again. Traveling across the U.S. was like a super popular, I mean, it still is a super popular Mennonite um, vacation. Honeymoon, too. Honeymoons, yes. Our grandparents, they went across the U.S. But yeah, it can get expensive. And so they would have these lists of people that would be willing to share out a room here or there. And you knew they were safe because they were probably a cousin of a cousin of a grandma or something. You know, and you would feel comfortable with them staying in your spare room or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this has evolved over time into the 21st century into what we call Mennonite Your Way. That's right. Mennonite Your Way is a private platform for Mennonites and those of like-minded faith. If you go on their website, you'll see a plethora of listings, not just for like cabins and apartments and things like that, but you can actually rent out your event space or your spare room even, a place to park an RV. It started as a network of people that had spaces to rent and when you were going to travel to like Florida or wherever and they would let you stay at their home for really cheap because they knew you were safe. And they weren't going to wreck the place. Yeah, exactly. It was like an, basically like a network of people that kind of knew each other, here, stay, whatever. Yeah. We're and always saying that Mennonites have all the connections and this is just another way that that comes into play. That's right. Plus, we're all about saving the money. And we brought this now, this concept, into the 21st century. Go on MennoniteYourWay.com just to find out more. I'll have the link for you down below. Please use our link so they know that we sent you. Um, but on there, you will see lots of listings. And you can even list your own property or rental that you have. I saw listings for the popular Mennonite destinations Angola by the Bay, which is where I went on my girls weekend, and Sarasota, Florida. Yeah, so next time you have a trip planned, maybe instead of just checking Airbnb or VRBO, check Mennonite Your Way. You know you're renting from a reputable, I was going to say establishment, but... (laughs) Someone that has some morals. Yeah, exactly. And you'll be saving money as well. So it's definitely a platform that I can stand behind, and I think it's a really cool concept. You can also get a printed directory if you'd rather, and that will get you tons more listings than are even on the website. So yeah, definitely check it out next time you have a trip planned or if you have a short-term rental of your own. What's the worst part about Instagram influencing? Instagram specifically. Instagram? Well, one, I always have this guilt because I always have DMs that are not opened that I didn't get to or that I didn't get to answer that I didn't get to respond to. So I always have that guilt. That started around when I think I had Miller. I just like gave up. I'm like, I just don't have enough time for this. Um, And then there is some times where I feel like I'm caught up and then... um, I get behind again. So that's something that I wish I could like engage more with my audience. I am so much a creator. I need to be more of like a um, better at like cultivating a community I think sometimes. I don't know. So that's hard to always balance. Um, And then there's always like you can always level up and you can always compare yourself to somebody else and be better which is a good thing. Like it pushes you to do better and be better but you never arrive then. You never feel like fully successful. Also, you have random success and you have no idea why. Yeah. And then I think another thing is too, sometimes I'll like put something out there and then it's like misunderstood where I should have, it's not my fault, it's not their fault, I should have just maybe elaborated mm-hmm. more or something. It's, like that's why like YouTube, it's more long form. Podcasts are even more long form. We can really expound about what we're talking about and there can be less room for like misunderstanding. Yeah. Whereas Instagram is just quick snappy clips and like people are clicking through so fast and stuff. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of assumptions that are made sometimes. Yeah. And the trolls. <laughs> yeah. How did you learn to edit videos? Practice, practice, practice. I downloaded a free a free application and just started working on it. And over time, I've learned. I actually used to say editing was my least favorite part. Now it's one of my favorites. It's like a little art project for me or something. I've gotten better at it and I have more tools in my belt that I can use. And so it makes it more fun. But I, I still, when I watch other people's videos, there's certain creators I follow that I just like get inspiration from how they edit or the, the fonts they use on screen or like the pacing. It really is, honestly, I know we talked about music in this episode um, with Boatberg Music Academy, but if you have a musical ear and like timing and stuff, I think you make a better YouTube editor because you understand pacing and flow and um, just like putting a montage to music and stuff. And so I enjoy that part. That makes a lot of it's, sense. It's really weird but to say that, but yeah, I almost think of it like an, an extension of the musical world in some ways. Hmm. That makes sense why I don't get it. <laughs> so do you have any employees or anyone that you pay to work on behind the scenes, business stuff, or household work or childcare? No, I have to pay Jaina. I'm very expensive. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you have to pay the on-screen talent. Yeah. Um, no, I have um, my sister who comes once a week, so she helps with housework for me sometimes and childcare. So I like I try to make sure I'm editing over that time because I'm paying her, so I need to be making money while I'm paying her type of thing. And then I have a um, brand partner manager, like she does a lot of the emails and stuff and she'll basically I pay her the money just because she can get her foot in the door like brands ignore you completely if you're just like going on their website and emailing them or DM. like it's hard to work with a brand that you want to work with if you so already she, have a foot in the door does she work with a bunch of influencers and kind of like market yes. you all at once so she has like a network like she, yeah. she they they know her and she knows them and so they're like we have fifty thousand dollars to spend on this campaign you know we'll divide it up among however many influencers get us the best return on our investment type of thing, all that. Um, and so, yeah, basically she gets my name in the door. And so that's why I pay her the percentage I have to pay her. Um, my husband does a lot of behind the scenes, all my taxes, all that stuff. He edits these podcasts. He is my moral support. Um, <laughs> so you pay him for moral support? Well, not financially. We are. We put our money on one pot, like whatever. Um, <laughs> I like to tell him that I bought him his truck. <laughs> nice. But there's no way of knowing that because it's yeah, all together. Cool. But yeah, I, I I pay him in certain ways, I guess. <laughs> That's why I said not financially. <laughs> okay, Jada. Yeah, sorry. Do you ever do things just for content purposes? For example, trips, baking, activities, crafts, remodels. I love this question because I have this question sometimes too. You can kind of tell when people um, are doing something for a YouTube video. I will say having a YouTube channel has really made me stay on my toes with creating in real life. So like maybe there's one week where I don't really feel like doing anything, but I have a video coming up and I would love to... Basically, I'm like, okay, what do I want to film? What do I want to edit? Well, I want to. I don't want to edit me cleaning out a garage. Like, that's not pretty to me at all or fun mm-hmm. at all. So, you know, I might be like, well, I, I need to make food for our fellowship meal on Sunday. Oh, maybe I could film that and make it pretty. Like, I'll maybe make my coconut macaroons because it's Easter time or like stuff like that. So I will curate things sometimes to the season that it's in or just what I want to watch myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's usually something I'm already going to be doing anyway. Like I said, we have a fellowship meal coming up or something like that. Never have I ever went and paid for a trip just so I could have YouTube content because one my I'm not a travel channel so those vlogs never do great I'm filming them for my memories right like it's like my scrapbook so not no with the traveling um what was the what were the rest remodeling no but some of my remodels are way cooler than they would be without YouTube because I get free furniture and stuff yes free furniture it's like awesome um but no I've never like Let's re redo the so like I had the sofa six months ago. Let's kick it out and put a new one in. Like you know, I don't need the sofa. I just turned down the sponsorship. Right. <laughs> Unless like I was thinking about that. I was like maybe I should like give my mom something or I don't know, <laughs> do it for somebody else. But that's something I do want. This is great life advice for anyone. Make sure you're not just consuming, consuming, consuming. Stop. Get your butt up off the couch and go cook something or go in your garden or play the piano or something create for yourself like, right whether you film it or not yeah yeah exactly well, yeah don't even film it but I'm just saying yeah I think we sometimes fall into that trap way too much of consuming 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 stop and create sometimes too how do you deal with negative feedback criticism or harsh comments you talked about this a little bit in regards to the formula incident but do you have anything else you want to share about that because I know some people can be really mean it's it's easier I would say it's easier when it's not true like oh, it's a misunderstanding or that's so mean. It's hilarious. Right. Or like, I don't get a ton of that though. Like, I feel like I have a very um, awesome following and I never know what to do. Like, do you delete bad comments? Sometimes I will. Josh is like, nope, that shows them that you saw it. Like, you should just ignore them completely. And sometimes when you leave a mean comment up, you'll have like six or seven people jumping in and, and, and supporting you and it creates... Like, I guess that's good for the algorithm or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't worry about that. I just try. I honestly, I cannot get to all my comments anymore. So I make sure I'm there for the first couple hours that it's live. And those are all my loyal followers and supporters. The people I actually want to talk to. Um, Not saying that if you watch it like a week or two later that I don't want to talk to you. But that's sometimes when a video will blow up and go Mm -hmm. to like people that don't understand you or know your Mm -hmm. background and stuff. So, um, yeah. How do I handle it? I think it's just knowing who you are um also like it should definitely hurt way worse if somebody in your family comes to you and addresses a character flaw or situation or like something that you did like their opinion counts way more right your family your friends not some random stranger on the internet 
Definitely. I mean, what do you think? Like, have you... Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how much the criticism and harsh comments, like, they, they hurt. Like, and it makes me angry. Like, why are you saying... Who are you? Like, I want to know who you are. And so sometimes I will find out who you are. Like, I'll go on YouTube. Like, I'll go see, like... Sometimes people have channels that they try so I can figure out who you're like, oh, I actually know who you are in real life and you're saying nasty things to us or like on Instagram, I'll track them down and like, I, I don't know, for some reason, I'm just like, who is this person that's saying these nasty things? And then sometimes if I find out, I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but obviously you can't track down everyone. And sometimes people have like no name accounts. And if you're messaging me something that's not nice from an account that's like no name or like you can tell it's just like a fake account blocked yeah blocked yeah. i currently have a woman in my dms that says negative things about every single yeah. thing and i've kept it there for entertainment purposes that's funny for yeah. a while but it started to be like just really ridiculous and i was like can i block her josh and he's like i don't know block. It's like she's just being rude she's not being like evil but like does she need that if she really hates you that much does she need that in her life like you're doing her a favor by just blocking yeah i should do that absolutely it, it's just so hilarious like how can you look because i'm kind of a negative person sometimes so it's good for me to like see like oh wow like she's really thinks everything negative like yeah. everything <laughs> i wonder if it's the same person who messages me and like she thought she was messaging you or something oh no i got hate <laughs> or no, 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 no. she said something about she i forget but like she she messed up she and it bashed was, she, me she was clearly bashing you what and in it? turn complimenting me i'll have to see if i can think of it again it was when i was talking about gardening i was doing like micro gardening or whatever she's like yeah and you went to the produce stand and spent 30 dollars and i was like no i didn't and she's like oh i meant to say at least you didn't and you had just posted something about spending money at a produce stand so like i for, i think she even mentioned your name or somehow i knew she bashed me for somehow $30. i knew that she was complimenting me while bashing you and it was such a weird feeling like i'm not sure how to feel about this <laughs> well if she's bashing me about spending 30 dollars at a produce stand i forget the details so don't quote me on the details least, yeah but i was like okay this is odd like i'm getting a compliment which is nice but also my cousin's being insulted which is not nice so okay Oh, we want to know about drama among Mennonite influencers. Is there any? <laughs> oh my goodness. I was thinking about this because I was like, it'd be fun to give some real juicy tea here. I could not think of anything. Well, that's good. Um, at all. Like, obviously, all the Mennonite creators that I know are super nice. And I would love, love, love to hang out in person. But we're all like moms of 500 kids. And like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're YouTubers, so we don't have time right. to like do all the traveling and stuff. You should have I a meetup and vlog it. I would love to do a meetup sometime. I think it would be so great. Because I don't have any coworkers, really. Like, Jaina can understand in some ways. But like, yeah. yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are you to be doing this when Ivani is 10? Oh, I hope. I mean, if if you guys are still here and things are still the way they are, I would hope I still am. I would say like 8.5. Obviously, anything can happen, but I still have a passion for it. It's still benefiting our family. It's still feasible, and I still haven't run out of ideas yet. So, so keep going. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what else did you want to know? Maybe we can do like put some more questions in a Q&A or general Q&A sometime or something. Yeah. But, Bailey yeah. needs you now. Ba yes, I know. I just heard Josh come in the door. Um my little one month old needs me. He does. <laughs> it's bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys all so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.